Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player-focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. Today I'm going to bring you a character guide to jump you right into the Magic the Gathering setting of Ravnica that was introduced to D&D and Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. I'm going to take inspiration from the Boros Reckoner card for Magic to build a character that will put you right into the thick of things. Build guides on this channel are built with the following in mind. I'm going to focus on levels 1-10 to 10 as most campaigns played are in this level range. Builds will be optimized to fill the concept but also be effective for combat and roleplay. I will be covering the features in race, class, and background choices that make the build possible. The core idea behind this build is to translate the mechanics of the Boros Reckoner card that plays as a tanky action hero cop. With that said, let's get started. First off, we're going to start with the obvious and pick Minotaur for our race. Minotaur will provide a plus 2 to strength and a plus 1 to constitution, which will allow us to hit hard to take a hit. You also have the option to use your horns as a weapon that will do 1d6 plus your strength and damage, as well as the option to use them in a bonus action to attack or take an action to shove an enemy with them. Lastly, you have the option to choose between Persuasion or Intimidation, which we will cover when we get to skills. Next up, we're going to pick Cleric as our class with a Tempest Domain as a subclass choice. While the Boros Ragnar card says this creature type is a Minotaur Wizard, the Cleric and the Tempest Domain abilities really capture the flavor of the card, which I will outline later in the video. For background, we're going to choose the Boros Legionnaire that is provided in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. The Boros Legion are the military and law enforcement guild of the setting. The background gives us the Athletics and Intimidation skills, a choice between Cartographer or Navigator's tools, and a language choice between Celestial, Draconic, Goblin, or Minotaur. The other features of the background are an expanded spell list and the Legion Station feature. Unfortunately, the expanded spell list does not synergize with the Thunder and Lightning Center buffs of the Tempest Domain, but provide more alternative damage type spells. The Legion Station feature allows a player to borrow simple equipment from the guild and have a place to stay. This could open up some possible roleplay opportunities to have your character interact with other Boros NPCs. Now let's get on with the choices for the build. For our stats, we're going to prioritize Strength with Constitution and Wisdom coming in second. Dexterity, Intelligence, and Charisma can be placed in whatever order you choose. Keep in mind though that Dexterity plays an important role in determining initiative, so making it your third or fourth choice is not a bad idea. For Skills, I chose History and Insight from the Cleric options, which will allow you to recall some information from the job and get a read on NPC intentions. For the Minotaur race, we pick Persuasion, and from the Boros Legionnaire background, we get Athletics and Intimidation. Having both Persuasion and Intimidation allows you to switch up for playing a good or bad cop, and Athletics cements you in the strong guy role. Now on to Languages. Languages are pretty simple. Pick Common Minotaur, and from the Legionnaire background, go ahead and pick up Goblin. You can make a case for Celestial instead of Goblin if you want to play a higher ranking or special ops sort of character that answers directly to the high command of the Legion, but I want my Goblin as it allows you to play more to the street level angle. For your proficiencies, you get access to all weapons and armor, and I chose to go with Cartographer's Tools as it is fitting for a Minotaur to read maps and not get lost. Starting equipment is as follows, Warhammer, Chainmail, and a Shield. The Warhammer has the versatility to up your damage from a D8 to a D10 if you choose to wield with two hands, but the most important choices for your starting equipment is your armor and shield. With Chainmail and a Shield, your armor class is a solid 18. Alright, let's go for a level by level breakdown. For level 1, as a Tempest Cleric, we get access to all weapons and armor. We also get the core ability that represents a boss record mechanic for Magic the Gathering and the ability named Wrath of Storm. Wrath of Storm is an ability that when you get hit by an enemy you can use your reaction to deal 2d8 lightning or thunder damage to your attacker. They will take half if they make a deck save but if they fail they will take full damage. Also at level 1 you get access to spell casting which allows us to get 3 cantrips and a few prepared cleric spells. For cantrips I recommend Guidance, Light and Firebolt. And for level 1 spells, I recommend Bless, Thunder Wave, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, and Shield of Faith. For level 2, we get access to our Channel Divinity, which will allow us to turn undead, but more importantly, we'll have another cornerstone ability for the build called Destructive Wrath. Destructive Wrath allows us to max out any Thunder or Lightning damage we do. This pairs well with the Wrath of the Storm ability, as well as any of our Thunder or Lightning based damage spells. At level 3, we get access to level 2 spells. My recommendations are Spiritual Weapon, Hold Person, Lesser Restoration, and Shatter. With the assumption feats are available in the game, at level 4, pick up the Magic Initiate feat and choose Wizard. From the Wizard spell list, pick up the Booming Blade Cantrip as it pairs with your Destructive Wrath ability. The other Wizard Cantrip is free to choose. The spells to pick up with the feat would either be Shield or Absorb Elements to either boost your defensive ability or add extra elemental damage to your attacks. Both are super flavorful and don't rely on your intelligence for casting. Clerics also get access to another Cantrip and that one also is free to choose. Level 5 gives us access to level 3 spells. Recommendations for spell choices are as follows. Dispel Magic. Mass Healing Word, Spirit Guardians, Call Lightning, and Revivify. For level 6, we can activate our channel ability twice a day. Also, we get the ability Thunder Strikes, which allows us to push a large or smaller creature 10 feet away after dealing lightning or thunder damage. Level 7 brings us level 4 spells. Recommendations are as follows. Banishment and Guardian of Faith. At level 8, we get the option of a feat or taking an ability increase. This choice is wide open. Shield Master would be a solid choice to help with those dexterity saves by being able to add your armor class bonus from your shield to those saves. Putting points in the strength or wisdom also works out. Channel Divinity to turn undead gets an upgrade and now wipes out any undead that are CR1 or lower on a failed save. 
Also, we will bring the beats with increased melee damage with Divine Strike. Level 9 gives us access to level 5 spells. My recommendations are Destructive Wave, Greater Restoration, and Legend Lore. Finally, at level 10, we get a new cantrip and there's no choice preference. We also pick up Divine Intervention, which allows us to roll percentile dice, and if we roll a number equal to or lower than our cleric level, our deity intervenes in some way up to the DM discretion. With that said, I want to hear from you. Comment below and let me know what you would do differently. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to know when new videos are going up. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.